Inheritance on Islam. But this issue about inheritance that we were talking about, yes. is that women are treated unequally to men when it comes to an issue like inheritance. So if any Muslim believes that, that ladies getting half of men is injustice and not right, they are violating their faith in Allah. Are they saying that Allah is unjust? They are violating their iman. But what I would like to, so the first point is, La yus al amma yaf al wahum yusalun. You never question Allah and His authority, mm. what He has done. But in reality, Allah has given women more respect, more like a father. A father gets one quarter of respect, and three quarter is for the mother. So uh, not unequal, um, you're saying. But um, we'll come back to this yes. uh, before we continue our discussion. Here's a Dhaka academic, Muhammad Abdul Mannan who is talking about what he thinks of religious groups' attitudes towards women. Academic Muhammad Abu Manan says that religious groupings in the country do not understand the way the community feels. The Habazat Islam leadership, they should have to understand the reality of this country. At the same time, the government, the civil society, the peace-loving people, the democratic people, uh, the people shall have to also uh, continue dialogue with them so that the way they were derailed by some other groups, they may come back to their right path. He claims that the religious group Hafazat Islam want to exclude women from the political process. If we think that women should not participate in the development process, they should remain at home, then half of the population are taken out of from the development process. So how come a country can prosper uh, just keeping half of the population without doing anything? So this is an, uh, an impossible proposition uh, they are trying to pursue in this country. Saliha, you were nodding along to some parts of that. What was? I, I think I said that in my earlier point, that yeah. the reality of what people are like in Bangladesh is very different from probably the kind of, you know, well, your 13 point. How was it Islam's point? Well, I don't know about that. All I can say is my particular perception um, and what I kind of know from the Muslim Youth Helpline in terms of Muslims ringing up and telling us about how difficult mm. it is. And then, you know, a, major, a lot of them are Bangladeshis or they're from the Indian subcontinent. And again, I think it's that we have to make that distinction between what the kind of common person perceives Islam and women in Islam to be. As I said previously, you know, you shouldn't be involved in politics or it's only certain people that should, you know, that are involved as women in certain, you know, in kind of working mm. life, etc. How did that life. come into Islam? Because Islam in its early days was of course. very liberating of women. Of course. Um, it, it was but very... I, I would like to say, comment yes. on, the, on the person. I think he is ignorant of the 13 point. He is putting an allegation on, mm. he did not read our 13 point. He said that you do not, well, your party does not want women in politics. No, he in doesn't politics. understand us. Does your party no, have he, women he, in he, politics? He's total lie, total allegation. In your leadership, are there women? No, no listen, listen to me. We, our, Khalida Zia is our leader. For 42 years, did any scholar say Hasina can't be a leader? If for, Hasina has been there. Has she been ever, ever, any demonstration was there by the ulama that we don't want Hasina as a leader? We never condemned any leadership. I've, I've been talking about Indira Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi. I've been talking about Benazir Bhutto. All the scholars are shoulder to shoulder with these women, taking them as their leadership. This is a false allegation by this man. He doesn't understand the 13 points. We said women should be empowered and given security and dignity, and that they should wear modest dress, not indecent dress, and they should not be discriminated their workplace. We said workplace. So he is saying we are trying to put the women in the house. And that is a total allegation. He did not read the ABC of the 13 point. So these people, all of them and their supporters are giving a wrong color of our 13 point. Saliha, if I can come back to you. Is it the case in Bangladesh that the female prime minister, female leader of the opposition, they're all in this position that they've got, this powerful position, because they're the wife of somebody or they're the daughter of somebody. Absolutely. Is that the case? I mean, of course. I mean, well, I, d I don't know about Sheikh Hasina. Um, she, ha you know, she's grown up in a political family. Well, she is because of the daughter of Sheikh Hasina. Yes, but she, that, she, she also has kind of, you know, um, political She doesn't have anything political. Like that. <laughs> she was brought in. She was brought in. But still, brought I, in. I, I think the issue is that I, I do find it difficult to understand how 
you know, this kind of nepotism works. Mm. It, that that it should be based on your Democracy. experience. It should be based on your ability to lead. Um, uh, however, they are in that position, and that's that's fine. And you know, their experience of being in, in those roles, they must have had experience, and therefore they're doing that. That's not part of my issue. I think my issue is again going back mm. to Bangladeshi people and the common people and how they understand Islam and their misunderstanding of Islam and women's roles and how do we deal with that? And I think that's on two, think, both sister, levels. If I may yes. interrupt, that is our inheritance of social system, custom. We come from a Hindu background and, and that is there. Yes. Empowerment of Islam from day one, Rasulullah gave Khadija radiallahu ta'ala ta when he was, had met with Jibreel, he was taking uh, advice from Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was, a, she was a tycoon. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, one of the advisors of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. All ta very prominent. One third of Islam came through Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. So empowerment of women in Islam all the time. 1,500 scholars of Islam are women. Thank you very so, much. I have to well. stop you guys Thank there because we've run out of time, but this oh. has been a fascinating <laughs> conversation. Um, but that's all we have time for this evening. I want to thank my guests, Mufti Shah Sadruddin and Saleha Islam for joining us. Thank you all at home for watching. And remember, you can keep up with our Twitter conversation on Bangladesh using the hashtag Bangladesh in crisis. And you can watch previous episodes of our series on our YouTube channel, which is Islam uh, youtube.com forward slash Islam channel TV. We'll be back next week with more coverage from Bangladesh, but until then, from all of us here, Assalamu Alaikum.